Hi everyone. Today I wanted just to go ahead and explain to you the difference between the real and nominal interest rate. And the basic idea here is that the real interest rate, which I'm going to abbreviate R, or that's actually terrible, let me do that again. The real interest rate that I'm going to abbreviate as R is going to be, say, the return to savings in terms of stuff. So this is the return to savings. measured in stuff, whatever stuff might be. Okay? And the nominal interest rate, I, is going to be the return to savings measured in dollars. Okay? So that's the distinction I want you to go ahead and get from this short little video. Alright, well let me erase all of this stuff. Or actually before I do that, as a reminder, what you should have gotten from the reading is that the real interest rate is just the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. And I'm going to ignore the issue of the expected real interest rate from the actual real interest rate. And we'll just go ahead and talk about the real interest rate. Okay, so you'll have to remember that this, that the real interest rate is the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate for this example to go ahead and work. Okay, so let me just go ahead and erase this little page. And now get on to the main point. So I think it'll be easier to demonstrate this if we just think in terms of a single good. So I'm just going to go ahead and say the price of a TV and we'll pick an easy number to work with, is $1,000. So let's say the price of the TV today is $1,000. And let's say you have, right now, $1,000. Okay? So the purchasing power of your $1,000 is one TV. So right now, at the beginning of the year, you have enough to go ahead and buy one TV. Okay. Now, you don't have to go ahead and um, buy the TV now. You could buy it in a year from now. And let's suppose that if you go ahead and deposit your uh, money in a savings account, you get a nominal interest rate of 10%, i.e. 0 0.10. Okay? Well, if that's the case, and you go ahead and deposit $1,000 in your savings account, so at the end of the year, end of year, you would get your $1,000 back. Oops, change that to black somehow. Okay, so you'd get your $1,000 back, plus you'd get 10% or $100. So you would have $1,100. So at the end of the year, you would have $1,100. Now, your reward for savings in terms of dollars is $100, because at the end of the year, you have an extra $100 to spend. Now, that may or may not translate into more stuff that you can go ahead and purchase. So, for example, suppose the price of the TV at the end of the year rose. And let's say the price of the TV, oops, well, let's erase that. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that the price of the TV at the end of the year is 1100 All right? I there is 10% inflation. All right. So at the beginning of the year, you had $1,000 in cash, which was enough to go ahead and buy one TV. At the end of the year, you have, have $1,100 in cash, which is still enough to go ahead and buy just one TV. Well, what's the real reward to you of saving over the course of the year? And the answer is, there's no reward to savings. Right, because at the beginning of the year you have enough cash to buy one TV, at the end of the year you have enough cash to buy one TV, so you didn't really gain anything by taking your money and putting it in the savings account. Another way we could say that is the real return to savings was zero. And the real return is the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. And if the nominal interest rate is 10% and the inflation rate is 10%, then the real return to savings is 0%. Okay. So, let me just do a slightly modified example to show when, what would have uh, uh, to show a positive real interest rate. So let's erase all that. And again, we're going to go ahead and start with the price of the TV is $1,000. Right? You have $1,000 to start off with. Right? So you start off with, again, enough money to go ahead and buy a TV at the beginning of the year. The nominal interest rate is 10%. So at the end of the year, of year, you have your $1,000 plus your 10% interest or 100 is going to give you a total of $1,100. Okay, so that's what you have at the end of the year. 
Now let's say the price of the TV at the end of the year is still a thousand dollars. End of year is one thousand dollars. All right. Well, then that means at the end of the year you have eleven hundred dollars. Okay. You can use that eleven hundred dollars to go ahead and buy a TV for a thousand dollars, and you still have a hundred dollars left over to go ahead and buy other stuff, or one tenth of a TV. Right. So in that case, your return, your real return to savings is one tenth of a TV because the one hundred dollars gets you one tenth of a TV. Another way we could say that is the real return to savings is ten percent. Because in this scenario, the price of the TV is constant, so we can go ahead and say the inflation rate is 0%. So the real interest rate is going to be the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, or 10%. All right. So what I hope you get out of these two short little video, or this short little video, is just that the, not of the real interest rate is the reward to savings in terms of how much stuff you get from deferring consumption for a year whereas the nominal interest rate is how many extra dollars you get from deferring your consumption for another year. And those two rewards can differ based upon what, uh, based upon the inflation rate. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you guys, or I'll talk to you guys soon.